hey there, let's talk about one-on-ones, how to get the results you need from those one-on-ones and how to use them to improve the quality of your communication. The thing to know about one-on-ones is they're here specifically to help you communicate effectively. They give both parties a way to take ownership of the relationship and they create a space where you can have meaningful conversations. Ultimately, that practice ought to make both of you a better leader, regardless of what the relationship is in the company. What types of things belong on the one-on-one meeting versus other areas of result maps? You can bring things in from anywhere in result maps to your one-on-one meeting. So maybe that would be an assignment you have a to-do or, or something from a project where you want to have a more in-depth conversation or maybe a conversation that either isn't the best use of everyone's time in a larger setting, or that you just want to get some form of feedback on that could be private or could just be more appropriate to be a one-on-one situation. As a leader, this is a great place to bring up things that you think may be running late or concerns that you may have, and specifically talk about performance. And these types of conversations are much better to have one-on-one the typical rule is you want to praise people publicly. And if you've got to have a difficult conversation, do it privately. So this is a great place to talk about performance, talk about how things are going and really be proactive about establishing rapport and figuring out how to work together to get the results you need. One of the most frequent questions we get is how does the one-on-one fit with the other areas of result maps? As I've alluded to, you can pull things into a one-on-one from anywhere in result maps, but there's a question that we get often, which is, should it, should I put something in my 90 second update or should that go in a one-on-one? The 90 second update is really there for you to pause and reflect firstly, and then secondly, to communicate out to the team, what you're doing to contribute. And those two things are really the primary goal of the 90 second update. At the same time, if you've got something in any context in result maps and you mark it complete, result maps will suggest it for your 90 second update. So something could be in a project in a one on your team weekly and also be shown in your 90 second update. It doesn't have to be an either or, and it's not something you really have to overthink. Anytime you're on your one-on-one meeting and there's a topic that maybe is in another area in result maps that you want to add, it's as easy as drag and drop and vice versa. If something comes up in that one-on-one meeting and you think, Hey, this needs to be on our weekly priority list, or it needs to be in project X, then you can easily use the sidebar that appears when you click on the navigator icon to drag and drop again, very simple, easy to move, easy to change. Another question we get is how long, a one-on-one meeting should be and how frequent they should be. I'm a big fan of a 30 minute max meeting. And if you can get it shorter often, it's a great thing to do. There's no points for having a longer meeting. I've worked with executives and myself. I've had meetings that are very short and incredibly effective. Other times we need to dive a little bit deeper. So 30 minutes is a good ground rule when you're blocking off time in your calendar to make sure that you're having this meeting. I personally like having a one-on-one meeting every week. Some people favor a bi-weekly cadence. Uh, some people, maybe it's a quarterly conversation. You can use the one-on-one for any of those cadences. It's really just creating a private space for you to create some type of work session with another individual. So another question we get is what should I cover in one-on-ones? And this is a great place to talk about the other things that we're capturing in result maps to provide clarity core values. Are there any behavioral concerns? Did something happen where you feel like a core value wasn't upheld? And this again, goes both ways in any sort of relationship in a company. I've been in one-on-ones where either party raises a core value issue and that's how it should be. You're discussing your numbers or if you're using EOS, they're called measurables. These are your key performance indicators if you're using another framework, but you're able to discuss those things and dive a little deeper in them than you might want to do in a meeting where everyone's there. Typically in a larger meeting setting, 
it's best not to occupy all the time unless it's a really critical thing for everybody to be in on that discussion. And the same applies to any of your targets, whether you're using rocks or objectives and key results. It's also a good place to bring up anything that's arising around actions or priorities that are coming up in other contexts, any issues you want to solve. So you'll see in the one-on-one -on -one screen, basically there's an agenda. You can just walk through each section. Again, spending the most time, just like you would in your team meeting, spend the bulk of the time solving issues together and making sure you're clearing those issues and getting clear on what your next steps are. A few closing thoughts. As a manager, having one-on-ones is useful for you to provide feedback and make sure that you're giving adequate feedback. I don't believe that they should be used as a micromanagement tool. It's more about, hey, things are looking good. And maybe one day you say, I'm good. I feel like you're making great progress. We don't even need to talk this week. They're there so that you can give whatever feedback you need to and to make sure that we can hold ourselves accountable as leaders to give that feedback. It also helps you stay closer to the data. Having the conversation, understanding what someone's facing ensures that you're informed as a leader. If you're meeting with a direct report or someone who's maybe sitting a little lower on the org chart. So it's a really good practice to make sure you're plugged in there. As a contributor, this is your chance to ask for clarification, make sure you're communicating back up the chain. Here's what's happening on the ground. Here's the support I need from you and things of that nature. And like most meetings, and especially when you're using result maps, you can make them asynchronous just by using the page to collect the ideas and information and use that as a talking point through a chat or maybe in some impromptu meetings. Closing tips for your one-on-one -on -one meetings. Keep things simple. You don't wanna create a lot of extra work. You don't wanna create a structure that's so formal that no one really feels they have uh, time or space to discuss things. I like to go through it just like all the meetings. We'll start with how are things going, very short segue in, then immediately get into here's our numbers, here's our goals, here are the issues. And then we can double click and deep dive a little more into what's going on. Keeping that simple structure really helps make sure that the time is used well and making sure you log the next steps so that you're creating accountability for both of you. Don't be afraid to commit to having a one-on-one -on, -one on your schedule. Everybody hates meetings and it becomes very fun to say, meetings are terrible, I'm never gonna have meetings. And you can probably get away with never having meetings, but don't not have a one-on-one -on -one just because you're afraid. Creating space to build relationship and make sure that things are moving in the right direction is nothing you ever have to apologize for. Now, if you're creating a thousand meetings all over the organization and all anyone's doing is having meetings, that can get a little difficult. But if you're on a highly focused team and you're driving towards results and you're making sure that you're communicating to who you need to communicate to, even if that's just taking in information yourself, these meetings can be super valuable. And as I mentioned, it's okay to end them early. The main idea is we're here to make sure we're taking ownership of the outcomes. And that's why we have these one-on-one -on -one meetings in the first place. It's a great leadership tool. It's a great management tool and Result Maps makes it easy. That's it for this video. If you have other questions, reach out to us in the help and we'll be delighted to either point you in the right direction or provide some more resources. Cheers.